Well, you know, European Union is still an unfinished cake. So, you know, the crisis sort of caught us in the middle of baking the cake. Now we took the cake out of the oven and it doesn't taste very good because the cake isn't ready. We still haven't, I think, done uh, the integration well enough. I think we really should think about not only integrating monetary policy, but also integrating fiscal policy and, you know, moving as, 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 as one Europe. So I'm also very happy with um, Macron being uh, elected as a French president who now will hopefully put some new energy into it and also speed up the processes. We can't do this anymore. The area of nation states is, is, is gone and we have to live with the new reality that if we want to control anything the only way how to control it is to control it globally or at least on a level of continent such as Europe. So I hope that these integrating forces will now once again come to force and make sure that Europeans do things together rather than against each other. From what, I, from what I read and heard about Macron, I think he's, he's, he's young. He's one year younger than me, finally somebody who's younger. So even that, I think, give, was going to give it some, some energy, um, especially after Hollande, I think, who became a very tired politician uh, with really no new ideas. Macron seems to have at least the energy and the vitality um, and some ideas to push, push Europe forward. I think in this, uh, all the people with some energy should come together. We shouldn't end up as a Europe of Kafkas. You know, for, uh, we should be more optimistic about ourselves. And this is something that the new leader, especially when he had Le Pen as his opponent, I think this is an extremely good news. And let's all hope that we can continue working on Europe after these, I don't know, 10 years of pause when we had to deal with problems that the whole world had to deal with. I think um, there is very much but potentiality, even growth, coming from integration. We still have a lot of energy in doing things together. Yeah, I think one of the ways how to read the uh, crisis is what I call a post-coitum post -coitum crisis, meaning that we have no new dreams to dream. And I hope that Macron will be um, at least wanting to be in the legacy of such great thinkers such as Helmut Kohl or Jacques Chirac and perhaps even Tony Blair and Václav Havel and, and you know idealists who actually had an image and I really hope that this is something that philosophers and thinkers and business people and people from the technology industry will take also as their responsibility to help because politicians um, they're supposed to only do the idea that somebody has. Politics is not the most creative industry nor is it very good in selecting the way the country should go. These ideas should come from the open society and then be maybe used and carried on by politicians. So I think this is a problem of, of all of us. This is maybe postmodernity <laughs> gone too far. It's been around for too long. We, we still are sort of philosophically clinched in a situation where we don't really dare to dream or have any new dreams to dream. And this is not something that is to be blamed on politicians only. This is something that the whole intellectual uh, crust of Europe is to be blamed. Yeah, so uh, the problem is that mm, uh, uh, an average job of an American or, or inhabitant of the United States of America uh, is threatened by allegedly two things. A clever taxi driver in New York uh, will be afraid of the self-driving cars. This will wipe this job almost 100%. Let's say a stupid or more conservative taxi driver uh, in New York will be afraid of foreign taxi drivers. But you can see that these foreign taxi drivers are a fraction of the, of, 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 of the disturbance that the digital self-driving cars will do. Now, nobody knows uh, how to fight digitalization. This we really need to put all the thinking people together and make sure that this blessing called new technology does not become a curse. If I drop a block of 10 tons of gold in the middle of Ljubljana, people can either fight for it and crush their heads over it, or they can take the blessing and make it a blessing by easily saying, okay, we'll use this as, I don't know, education or healthcare or, or we save it for the future, whatever. And this is something similar we need to do with, with digital, uh, which is digital revolution. We don't know what to do with it. This is really an intellectual problem par excellence, maybe intellectual problem number one or two. So we revert to 
you know they say in international relations you always fight the, the previous war and also in this one we're trying to fight digitalization but we don't know the the, the name of the enemy so we are fighting with nationalism so we so trump is effectively trying to stop self-driving cars by building a wall you know this is what i mean by fighting digitalization with nationalism You know, you know the song, I shoot the sheriff, but I did not shoot the deputy. This will be the opposite. We will not shoot the sheriff, but we will shoot the deputies. And so every intermediary, you can see this nicely in, in, in Uber. So the intermediary of the calling person uh, is unnecessary. And, and, and no human being should do a work that a computer can do better. Um, uh, and the same thing you can see with Airbnb. Now, these things need to be regulated. They shouldn't be banned. This is again the problem that we are banning the Uber drivers. We're banning Airbnb. It's like if the, it's like if um, uh, a stone shop would suddenly want to ban internet shops. I mean, this is something that really doesn't make, doesn't make much sense. And also in the financial world, in the world of banking or in the world of any financial intermediaries, um, uh, I think within 20, 30 years we will be packing our bags and our children should be definitely studying something, something different because um, I would say most of the work that we do, especially the technical analysts, will be uh, very soon substituted by, by an artificial intelligence. Now there might artificial intelligence. Now there might be some role for human beings to play, such as now that you know when I come to you, I make a nice smile, I give you a cup of tea or something like that. That era will be left in banking, I think but also maybe for our generation, I think the generation of our children will no longer be interested in having a tea with his financial accountant.